and a special welcome to you if you're a visitor. I can't see a thing from up here. You're just a big uh, dark <laughs> space. So um, if you're a visitor, um, then do uh, feel especially welcomed. Also, welcome to those joining us online. And of course, if you're a regular, you're always welcome. <laughs> So the church is looking exceptionally beautiful, isn't it? And I uh, want to thank Hayley and her team for um, just all the work that they do uh, to prepare for our Christmas services. So thank you, Hayley, and all your team. Um, just, uh, just to say, it goes without saying that there are live candles around us, so um, do be careful. Uh, don't get too exuberant in moving around, those of you who are very close to the candles. But just in case, we're not expecting a fire, but just in case, there is a fire exit there and one there. <laughs> so um, just in case you need it. Um, I'm hoping the service will run through uh, without everything being introduced. So um, please feel free to sit or to stand, however you feel comfortable when you see the song words come up and when the musicians start to play. So stand to sing or sit to sing, whatever you feel comfortable, uh, our carols through the evening. But first, let's put that first Christmas into context.
pray together. God of hope, we pray that you would open our hearts to your presence tonight. As we listen again to the wonderful Christmas story, may your truth come alive to us afresh. And may we respond to your love. In Jesus' name, amen. first reading, Luke 1, verses 26 to 35, and then in verse 38, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, You who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her.
2, verse 1 and 3 to 20. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a manger, a baby, sorry, <laughs> wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God, for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
to sing praises to God and to hear from his scriptures but it's even more a blessing to be able to speak directly to him and that's what we're going to do now we're going to pray so let's pray yes. heavenly father at Christmas we give thanks to you for the incredible gift of your son your free gift that enables us to do what we're doing right now speak to you and a gift that gives us hope hope for peace on earth goodwill for all men and an eternity in your holy presence for those that know and follow you. Yet, Lord, we realise that we live in a world where hope seems in short supply. So many are struggling with financial burdens, health issues, the daily effort to find enough food to survive, or the threat of a sudden death falling from the sky. We know others struggle to find purpose in life, trustworthy friends or someone to care about them. All these things we know you too experienced in your life on earth as you lived in an occupied land and became a refugee fleeing from those who would kill you. Yet at Christmas, Jesus, we gather to celebrate your birth, the beginning of an incredible process leading to a sure and certain hope of release from our sinful ways and a path into an eternal life of joy in your presence. Our hope and prayer is that you, Lord God, would work out your plans in your time. And we believe in this sure and certain hope because we know that you have been at work in the past and in our lives today. So we can trust that the time will someday come when you will make all things new. Even as we celebrate and have fun this Christmas, we pray for your mercy on all those who suffer at this time. And we ask you, Lord, as you did when you came to earth in human form as a baby, to again reveal yourself and the hope you bring to all those who seek you today. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. This next reading will be taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? 
We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. <clears throat> but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. I was there, you know. To be honest, I wasn't in the best of moods that night. Times were tough. Economic uncertainty, I think the phrase is. And I knew that as a self-employed shepherd, struggling to make ends meet, the outlook was as bleak as the weather. And according to the papers, I had it all. I was young, rich, and wise, so they say. And with the world at my feet from the day I was born. But somehow, it wasn't enough. There was something missing. I just didn't know what it was. I know you wouldn't think it to look at me now, but I played a major part that night. In fact, I had a star in Rome. I was one of the main choreographers in the greatest opening ceremony the world has ever seen. Imagine having that on your CV. We spent an eternity rehearsing, getting everything just right. I assumed the audience would be a whole host of the brightest and the best, but they turned out to be much more down to earth than that. I've been passing the time with some of the other shepherds, huddled round the campfire to keep warm. They were having some stupid argument about who had the biggest flock, but I had other things on my mind. And I ended up throwing myself into astronomy, searching the night sky for answers to all my questions. I met some other stargazers, and together we came to know every inch of the heavens of ours. Do you know the best bit? The element of surprise! <laughs> there we were, silently waiting in the wings, and they didn't have a clue. Suddenly, suddenly the sky, which had been as black as my mood, burst into the brightest, most brilliant light. It was golden and warm, like the best feeling in the world. The others were terrifying, but I just had that sense that finally things were looking up. And that's when we saw the new star, where no star had been before. You couldn't miss it. It lit up the entire sky. And I knew without a doubt that this was what I'd been waiting for. We were all champing at the bit to start the show, but there was a message to deliver. Out of the light came a figure, like a person, only not a person, if you know what I mean. Radiant is what he was, so radiant even the sheepdogs didn't, bear, didn't dare bark. He spoke to us, told us a baby had been born in town, and we were supposed to go and see him. Why did we decide to follow the star? I don't know exactly. But when it started moving, we just knew it was leading us somewhere, and we needed to follow it. And that was our clue. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, out we came, 
the grand finale. On it, oh, it was great fun. Flying and floating, swooping and swooshing, gliding and singing. The harmonies were out of this world, if I do say so myself. Now, I know I'm already sounding like I had a bit too much to drink around the campfire. But there were people up there in the sky, thousands of them, flying around above our heads and singing their hearts out, proof, as if it were needed, that this message about the baby really meant something. We were on the road a long time, the star always just ahead of us. We never quite knew what was around that corner, but we were confident that we would reach our destination. It was a shame we had to stop. I could have gone on all night, but in reality, we were just the warm-up band. The headliners was the one whom they really needed to see. So suddenly, they were gone. And there we were, in the dark and the silence, a bunch of confused and traumatised middle-aged shepherds. Well, there was nothing for it but to head off for town and find this baby. The others were convinced that if we didn't go, the glorious chorus would be back for round two. <laughs> and it's funny when you reach the end of a long journey. I was worried I might be disappointed after investing so much hope in where the star would lead us. But as I stood there, outside the room, where the baby was, I thought I've come all this way. I might as well at least stick my head round the door. And say to the little one, Welcome to our world. Our crazy, confused and messed up world. But as soon as I saw him, I felt him say, I know, that's why I'm here.
A Series of Impossible Events by Mark Green. Of all the impossible things you ask me to conceive, which one, you wonder, do I find most difficult to believe? That a child might be born without parental seed? That God would lie in a trough where animals feed? That a billion-year-old star should time its flight to point so small a band to the royal light? That winged angels sing impossible news for all the earth to nobody night workers on nowhere turf. Or this, that God, creator of time and space, Mediterranean azure and gazelle grace, that God, Immortal should come down in mortal flesh. God with us in all our human mess. God with us in bomb blast and first breath. And some slow dimming towards a memoryless death. God with us in the crushed commute and the lonely bed, in the sleep, wake, eat, work of our daily tread, in our petty snipes and bloated ambitions, in all the twists of our confused decisions. God with us in all of that, God with me, in all of me? No, that I could not believe if, with outstretched heart, he had not given free his blood and life on that barren tree. And with love and mercy tender wiped my eyes so I do see. John 1, verses 1 to 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, 
the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Twenty twenty three. It's been quite a year, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Where did it go? It doesn't seem like five minutes ago that I was standing up here and delivering my twenty twenty two address. I googled significant events in twenty twenty three, and this is what it came up with: the coronation of King Charles, war in Ukraine and the Middle East unpredictable weather. The Lionesses made the World Cup final. Strikes. A felled sycamore tree. The Barbie music movie hit the screens. Home and Away celebrated its 8,000th episode. <laughs> well, that might be important to somebody. <laughs> I wonder what sticks in your minds from this last year. But whatever life throws at us, according to psychologists, there are three major essentials that people need to thrive and flourish in life. Number one, that we have something or someone to love. Number two, that we have something to do. And number three, that we have something to hope for. 
something to love and something to do, that's to do with our sense of value, isn't it? Our sense of self-worth, of feeling significant, of being accepted. Something to do, that's to do with our purpose. Feeling we have something worthwhile to contribute, some reason for being, and something to hope for. That's about our expectation for the future. Having something positive to aim for, something that spurs us on and keeps us going. Now, last year, we played Richard Osman's House of Games emojis round, for those of you who were here. And this year, we're going to have a go at some anagrams. So all you have to do is decipher the anagram. And uh, then when we get to all this, at the end of the six, you need to work out what all these anagrams have in common. All right? So here's the first one. Shout it out. Health. Health. Well done. Health. OK. This one. Oh, let's put the answer in. Next one. Oh, that's so easy, isn't it? Success. All right. Next one. What was that? Happiness. There we go. Snipe. There we go. What about this one? Easy. Peace. This one? Sunshine. Sun. Who said sunshine? Well done. Well done. Well done. There we go. And this one? Freedom. Freedom. Okay, there we go. What do all these things, I've added a few more, wealth and security on there. What do all of these have in common? Um, broad. Well-being. Well-being, yep. Yeah. They're all the kind of things that many people hope for in life. Yeah? Health, happiness... Success, sunshine, <laughs> freedom, peace, wealth, security. Our theme tonight is hope. Someone once said that life without hope is just survival. Life without hope is just survival. According to the dictionary definition, hope is an optimistic state of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes in the future. An optimistic state of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes in the future. And you know, the world out there offers us hope at every turn, doesn't it? Do this, have that, invest in this, go there, and you'll have everything you're longing for. It'll make your life. But unfortunately, as somebody once said, worldly hope is often like a hospital gown. You're not quite as well covered as you thought. The hope that the world offers is often futile. It doesn't often deliver what it promises. It can leave us feeling empty and disillusioned and hopeless. Quite the opposite of what we were hoping for. But hope that the Bible talks about isn't just wishful thinking. It isn't just airy, fairy dreams or even gearing ourselves up to think positively. At its core, Christian hope is based on God, our creator, the sustainer of the whole universe. It's about what he promises and what he can do. And according to the Bible, he can do anything. And he always keeps his promises. A Christmas, true and lasting hope was born. And he has a name. His name is Jesus. We've just been singing, haven't we, those words from the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And we sang these words, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in you tonight. Met in that little town of Bethlehem, in the person of Jesus. 
When we hope and trust in Jesus, we have a hope that is steady and certain, that doesn't disappoint or fade, that doesn't let us down. A hope that holds us firm even in the most difficult of circumstances. I can testify to that in my own life, and millions of Christians all over the world can testify to that too. I I recently heard about a 17-year-old girl called Emma, who I found very, very inspiring. For many years, Emma has had to wear a brace for scoliosis, for curvature of the spine. In fact, she wears this brace for 23 hours a day. On the one hour that she can be free of her brace, she does what she loves to do most. That is, she goes to a ballet lesson even though it's agony for her. In 2019, when Emma was just 13 years old, she wrote a poem. And this is what she wrote. Refresh me, O Lord, and show me too that suffering is a blessing from you. Refresh me, O Lord, and help me know there's a sure hope when I'm feeling low. Refresh me, O Lord, and let me share my struggles and honesty in my prayer. Refresh me, O Lord, and may I be still. Let me know you are God as I trudge up this hill. Refresh me, O Lord, and let me lift up my eyes to you, O God, as your greater plans are wise. Refresh me, O Lord, and fill me with glee as I know all the plans that you have for me. As you know all the plans that you have for me. Refresh me, O Lord, and let me be. Take my life. It's all for thee. Refresh me, O Lord, and let me know this will end. You are not my enemy, but my loving friend. Refresh me, O Lord, as I sit in the dust to let go of my desires and fall back in trust. Refresh me, O Lord, and may I cast all my cares upon you constantly in my prayers. Refresh me, O Lord, may I know when I'm hopeless, how you carry your children and how closely you hold us. Refresh me, O Lord, let me not walk by sight, but by faith daily following your awesome light. Refresh me, O Lord, and let me know this is just some of the glory and joy that is to come. Refresh me, O Lord, and through whatever I do, may my actions and words bring praises to you. That's from A 13-year-old wearing a brace 23 hours a day with scoliosis. That's very inspiring, isn't it? And there's a little girl, a youngster who has her hope in something that's not of this world. A hope that's real and alive despite her circumstances and life's many limitations. The focus of her hope is her Lord who the Bible describes as the God of hope. When we come to know this God of hope, we find someone to love who loves us immensely more in return and has loved us first. We find something to do and something to hope for ourselves. He's a God who loves us more than we'll ever, ever know who offers us meaning and purpose and a secure hope for the future, despite what's going on around us. In his love, God gave the world the most precious thing he had. He gave the world his only son to be our saviour. He gave his very best. Jesus, who was born as a baby, but then who lived and died and rose again, so that we can be forgiven and exchange all our mess for his peace and a future with him forever. And this Christmas, God lovingly invites us not 
only to join the celebration, but to join his family, to respond to his love by loving and trusting him in return. He offers us the best life now, enjoying his presence and playing our part in his amazing and exciting plans and purposes. But we also have a certain hope to look forward to. God has promised that one day there will be an end to sadness and suffering and pain. And on that day, he will wipe every tear from his children's eyes. And he will take them to live with him forever. What an amazing hope that is. As we heard in the reading from John's Gospel, the, God, the hope God gives is for all who will believe. It's an open invitation. The question is whether we'll take that step and make room for him in our celebrations, but more than that, in our lives. And I pray that you will know God's blessing this Christmas and through the coming year. But more than that, that you will embrace the hope that God has to offer, that he offers each one of us this Christmas. May you have a really happy and blessed Christmas. Thank you. Is 
Let's just have a moment of quiet, shall we? God of hope, you brought love and peace and joy into this world. Be the love, peace and joy that dwells between us. Be the rock on which we stand. Be the centre, the focus of our lives always, and particularly this Christmas time. May we know your blessing and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to explore a little more about the Christian faith, the meaning and purpose of life, and uh, about the hope that we've been talking about tonight, in the new year, um, we're going to be running um, two courses. Um, One of them, I have to be careful how I introduce this without sounding rude. One of them is for the slightly older generation. And uh, it's a new course out called Hymns We Love. And uh, another course is called Alpha. And that's uh, one of them is going to be in the afternoon on a Wednesday. That'll be Hymns We Love. And the Alpha is going to be on a Thursday evening. If you'd be interested in either of those, then do look at our website for details. We also have some little um, leaflets here called The Hope of Christmas. And uh, if you would like to take one of those, just outlining a few more of the the things we've been talking about tonight, then you'd be very welcome to take those. And they're on the table at the back and also on the table just as you leave. We're going to um, end with um, a wonderful... Carol, apparently it's number two on the list of favourite carols, and it is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You'll all be wondering, what's number one? It's Oh Holy Night. Apparently it's the nation's favourite. But we're not going to be singing that. We're going to be singing Hark the Herald. Such wonderful, rich words to ponder as we sing. So um, let's stand, let's give it some welly and raise the roof. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Glory to the newborn King.
do have a seat just while I give you some final announcements. Hope you won't rush away. Uh, do stay for mulled wine and mince pies, and uh, we'd love to get to know you, to chat with you. Um, just to say, tomorrow morning, our Christmas morning service, our celebration is at 10.30. You'd be very welcome to come to that. If you want to bring some of the presents you've opened so you can show everyone, uh, then we'd love to, um, to share that together tomorrow. Uh, just a heads up, if you'd like a little bit of a more reflective, quieter service in between Christmas and New Year, then we have something called Blue Christmas, which is going to be uh, on the 28th at 4 o'clock. And that's a time just to catch your breath uh, and reflect before the New Year kicks in again. Um, so do feel free to come to that as well. So thank you to all who have taken part, and uh, thank you all for coming, and I do wish you... A very happy and blessed Christmas. Thank you. Thank you.